Oh, I spoke to him just a few moments ago. So, Congressman, you're not willing to support the Bader bill at this point. Why? Well, it raises the debt limit, and I've made too many promises that I wouldn't raise the debt limit. I've never voted for the appropriation bills, and I've been worried about our spending for many, many years, if not decades. So I think that would only encourage people to spend more money. If debt is the problem, raising the debt limit by $2.4 billion, I don't see how it can be a solution. You, you, you talk about, the, obviously, the principles behind you're not supporting it. Is part of your thinking, though, also politics of what happens to the bill in the Senate and, and what happens after that? No, I, I think that's sort of not much of my concern. That's what most of what's going on here is all the politics. I've, I've heard that they've already know what to, they'll finally come out of this, but they have to go up to the last minute to see who gets blamed for whatever and see who can get the best edge. But I think the leaders have more or less agreed on something to raise the debt limits. You think regardless of what you vote, regardless of whether or not the Boehner bill moves forward tonight, that the debt limit will still be raised? Yes, one, one way or the other. Yes, they're, they're going to raise it. They will, they will not default by not paying the bills. Uh, governments our size and in this much debt always default in a different manner. The default has to come, but they'll default by paying the bills off with bad money. So we're constantly defaulting, and we've done this uh, over many, many years. You, you talked about the politics that are happening uh, among other people on Capitol Hill right now. For, for folks who are watching at home, they see this, a lot of people see this, as just pure politics going back and forth. Can you explain, yeah. I mean, what is happening there right now? What, what, what are the politics behind all this? Well, I'm not an insider. I don't know the exact details. You're a so congressman, I, though. I mean, I you're, you're pretty much an insider, aren't you? Yeah, but I, I don't, I'm not in John Boehner's office, you know. He doesn't ask me my opinion. But what, what my opinion is, is that they're trying to find out who's going to get blame and who's going to get credit. Uh, because they know they have to achieve something. What do you make of what's going on with the GOP, though? I mean, what does it say about John Boehner as Speaker of the House, or about who's, I mean, who's in charge of, of the Republican Party? If John Boehner, the Speaker of the House, can't, um, can't wrangle his own members? Well, I think he has a tough job. He has a lot of new members, so even though I disagree with his uh, answers and his programs, uh, I, I sort of have a bit of sympathy for him <laughs> trying to put them all together and get something passed. But just think, uh, just think of what happened to Paul Ryan. He made a proposal and he got bashed pretty badly. So Boehner still has to put up with the Senate and the president and goes back and forth. It's, it, it's in many ways just a power struggle. Who's going to end up with a power in government and who's going to get blamed? So that's, that's what I see going on. But, but I think, uh, you, you know, Speaker Boehner, under the circumstances, he's, he's probably earnestly trying to solve this problem, but it's an insolvable problem because we're bankrupt. Nobody wants to admit the real problem. We're bankrupt, and we can't continue spending, and even these temporary proposals won't address the subject that we will default. We won't default by not paying the bills. We will default by more inflation, and that is a serious problem. I, I want to play something that I, I know you heard. I'm sure you heard uh, John, uh, John McCain speaking on the, the floor yesterday. Let's just play that for a few. Republican House had failed to raise the debt ceiling would somehow escape all the blame. Then Democrats would have no choice but to pass a balanced budget amendment and reform entitlements, and the Tea Party hobbits could return to Middle Earth having defeated Mordor. This is the kind of crack political thinking that turns Sharon Angle and Christine O'Donnell into GOP Senate nominees. He was reading, obviously, from a Wall Street Journal e editorial, though, but pretty harsh words about the influence of the Tea Party, the effect of the Tea Party right now on this debate. What do you make of what he said? Uh, he sounds angry. I, I'm pretty upset, and I haven't uh, had the philosophy of uh, sound money and personal liberty that I desire, but I, I hope I don't sound that angry because I think that uh, we have to change people's ideas and, and change people's attitudes about government and, and find out what the role of government ought to be. See, nobody talks about, you know, in the midst of all this, we should be talking about why we can't be the policeman of the world and why the entitlement system has to be totally revamped. Do you think the impact of, of these new members, these Tea Party members, and, and, and sort of ideologically, you, you have kind of, you were out in front of a lot of these folks. Uh, do you think it's been a, a good influence right now? I mean, do you think it's a good positive effect? What's happening right now, this uh, dissension within the Republican Party, do you think it's ultimately a good thing? 
I, I think so. It calls attention to our problems. I just hope we can follow through with the right answers. If it's all anger and screaming and blaming, it won't work. But if it comes to the conclusion that I've come to a long time ago, that we have to change our attitude about what the role of government is, and maybe we ought to just you know, follow the Constitution, because that gives us a pretty good guideline. But we don't do that. But I think the subject that the, that the younger members bring up and the pressure is, you know, put on dealing with the subject, I think is very good because it brings us closer to that day when we decide the real issues. Uh, Congressman Ron Paul, I appreciate your time. Thank you. Okay. And